All right. All this chapter, we are going to be talking about finding out and learning about the idea of a system of equations. Now, what is a system? It's two or more lines. Okay? So, in terms of what is a system of linear equations, we can very simply write, it's going to be two or more lines. So here I, I will draw a little example. Here's my graph. Here's line one, red. Here's line two, black. That spot where they cross is called the solution. Okay? So, what is the solution of a system where the two lines do what? Meet. All right, so we have three possibilities. Here's our x and y axis. Case one, case two, case three. My red line on all three will be the same. Now, my other line, do they meet? Case one, do they meet? Yes. Yeah, how many times? Once. Where do they meet? where I put the dot, at a point. Case two, can you think of another scenario where they don't meet in a dot? Uh, parallel, good Abby, yeah, they're parallel. Excellent, so let's draw a line that's parallel. Case two, do they meet? No. How many solutions are there? None. All right, case three, can you think of a third scenario that's not a point and not parallel. What could the second line be, Josh? Parabola. Well, it's got to be a line. But I, th I know you're going a different type of equations. It could be this. Where did I draw the blue line? Right on top of the red line. Where does the blue line and the red line meet? They're on top of each other. Do they meet in a bunch of places? Yeah, the line itself is the answer. So this, one solution, case two, zero solutions, case three, how many solutions? Inf infinite, yeah, that's right. Infinite number. So a lot of different possibilities. Now, in order to figure out if something actually is a solution, we can check it. So what I want to show you is just how to determine if this point, 2, 7, actually lies on both of these two lines. Now we can do this without graphing, Ryan, very simply just by plugging them in. So if you remember from the first semester, when we plug something in, we use parentheses. So there I've replaced my x and my y with parentheses, and I'm going to plug in my values 2 and 7. 2 is the x, 7 is the y. So does 7 equal 6 plus 1? Would you say that's true? I would hope. Isn't 7 equal 7? So that's true. All that tells us is this lies on the first line. Now let's check the other one. y equals x. Let's plug those in. Does 7 equal 2? No. So does the point 2, 7 lie on both lines? No, it only lies on one of them. So is there a solution to this system? No. To be a solution, Kyle, it's got to lie on both the first line and the second line. Now let me show you what I'm doing here visually, because I'm a very visual person, and this helps me. Here's 3x plus 1. I start at 1, go up 3, and go over 1. So there's a basic sketch of that first line. Here's the line y equals x. And here's the point 2, 7. Does 2, 7 lie on the blue line? Obviously. Does it lie on the red line? No. But do we have to graph this to determine if it's a solution? No, we can just plug it into the first scenario and the second. Now, let's, let's be smart here. If you get a yes for that one and a yes for that one, what's the answer? Yes. 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 What if we get a no for that one? 
Do we need to go to the second scenario? Not necessarily. It's like, you know, if I say you can only you can only leave and uh, go on to geometry if you pass this class, and you're a student at Wheaton Academy. If you don't pass the class, can you go on? No. You don't have to even consider the student at Wheaton Academy. You can only get M&Ms if you do a problem up here at the board and you write something. If you don't come up, you don't get M&Ms. It's, you gotta be at least the first case and then the second case. So here's our second question. We could graph it and we'll sketch that later. But for right now, let's just figure the system out. Y equals 2X minus 7. Now what's the point they want us to try this time? See it right here? 2, negative 3. So let's plug in. Is negative 3 equal to 2 times 2 minus 7? What's 4 minus 7? So that one works. So far we know the point is on the first line. The question is, is the point on the second line? Let's see. Negative 3 equals 2 minus 5. What's 2 minus 5? So does it work? Yes. So does this point lie on both lines? Therefore, that's where they cross. Let's just show it graphically. 2x minus 7 would be about down here, go up 2 over 1, something like this. x minus 5, I'd start there, something like that. And this spot right there, what do we know about that point? That's 2, negative 3. Now, if I had done this accurately on graph paper and done it very, you know, with a straight edge and all that kind of stuff, you'd see it. But just with a sketch, you know you're in the right ballpark. So, no, what they're going to ask you tonight is they're going to say, they're going to give you a point. And they're going to say, is this point a solution? The only way for you to figure out that is it a definite solution is to try it into both the first equation and the second, and they both have to work. If only one works, it's not a solution. But if they both work, it is. Okay? So... We have this question down here. It says, when we want to solve a linear system by graph and we follow three steps. What steps did we follow? Really simple. Graph the first equation. Now, when you're graphing the equation, Jelan, as we've been emphasizing, remember how we talked about putting points over the whole graph? All the way up and down? Very important that you do that. Second, obviously, is graph the second equation. And then what are we going to analyze? Determine what? Yeah, if they meet. And if so, where? Now, what is the likelihood that two lines are going to exactly cross at nice, neat points? 2, comma, 5. Is that likely? What's it more likely that might happen? Maybe it crosses at 2 and a half and 1 and a third or something like that. In that case, what you're going to have to do, Katie, is just kind of ballpark what you think the answer is. And your answer might be 2 and a half, it might be 2 and a quarter. You're both right. Okay. If you're just using graphing to solve, estimation is okay. Yes, Ms. Todd? If you're not sure, maybe put like the little, remember that little squiggly equal sign, that approximately? Do that. All we're looking for is with graphing, you get approximate answers. And that's very important sometimes to help you kind of ballpark your numbers. I'm going to show you later how to get exact answers. But... Obviously, both are very important to be able to do. So, good question.